what is the peace of God? The peace of God is a state of rest, quietness, calmness, absence of strife, tranquility. In general, it denotes what we call nothing missing, nothing broken. Any evil handwriting that has been written concerning you from your father's house, from your mother's house, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. May God send an, may God send an angel. May God send an angel to destroy every plans they have concerning the church. Here now, God has also interpreted his word. And there's what they call the peace of God. That brings me on the platform of what I'll be sharing with you today. The peace of God. Tell everybody the peace of God. For I am persuaded that not as dead nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other great things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Above all, you are covered with the blood of Jesus. Ancestral curse, ancestral homes shall not come near your dwelling place. Father, we thank you. Everywhere you put your feet, you shall possess it. In Jesus' mighty name. The things that mess your parents will not come near your dwelling place. You are blessed and you are highly favored. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The peace of God is not only God taking you out of danger. It's the whole package. Nothing missing, nothing broken. God in the book of Luke 10, 10, 19 has told us he has given us power, authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And he said nothing shall by any means harm us. But the writer here, Apostle Paul to be precise, he said be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And when you let your request be made known to God, as soon as you do that, he gives you the peace, the high way. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He said, yes, now, the peace of God, it surpasses every understanding. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be in your house. We thank you this day that has been set aside to bring your children back to the house of God. Accept them, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. And I want you to appreciate yourself. We have a lot of visitors in the house. Put your hands together for yourself for stopping by, for being a blessing to the family of Dakun. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We'll go straight to the world so that somebody's faith will be activated. But I have a good news for you. That amen was very weak. The word of God is always a good news. Because when you open up your television, you hear breaking news. And the breaking news might not be a good news. But I still have a good news for you. Amen. We are in a spiritual and a physical combat in this world. But God's power and the peace is our arsenal. And the protectors that we have to really deal with these things. So irrespective of the things you see, you don't need to worry because God is still on the throne. Amen. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Irrespective of the things you see, if you're a very good student, you will know that this is the time for things like this to happen, but never you'll be worried. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the word of God quickly. Colossians 3 verse 15 if you're there. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which you also were called in one body, and be thankful. God is saying, let the peace of God rule your heart, to which you also were called in one body, and be thankful. The peace of God is not the peace of the world. The peace of God is something spiritual. The peace of God is something divine. The peace of God will always dwell in your heart. The peace of God is something you have already. You must activate and grow in it. It will be wrong for you to begin to ask God, give me peace. 
Because God will prove it to you. He already given you peace. He came to die for you. Amen. And the Bible said the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his tribes, we are healed. Amen. So it's for you to have this revelational knowledge. Because he made us to know this before he departed. He says in this world, only we see tribulations and troubles. He told us before he left. So if you see trouble now, see that your father has told you it will come. But he said, I've given you peace. Peace is power over crisis. Peace is what gives you Irene, Shalom, Irina. These are things that keeps you. Sometimes people see you are calm. It's like, are you not feeling the heat they are feeling? But there is something that has wrapped your spirit that keeps you going. Show me a Christian that is always worried. I will tell you a Christian that I've lost the peace that God has given to him or her. Don't let circumstances take away your peace. There's somebody here. He said the peace of God, very, very important. So that means there is other peace. We have the UN peacekeepers. The highest they can do is to maybe cover, they say, no fly zone. You know what I'm talking about. They just go there without munitions and then they do that in the physical. But the peace I'm talking about is something spiritual, something that money can buy. Something which God paid the price. The Bible made us to understand it was a total package of God's glory that Adam and Eve, they lost. Then Leviticus 17 verse 11 said something very clear because it needed a blood for remission of sin. And there was no other blood that was qualified without sin to match the nature of our Lord. Therefore, Jesus Christ was sent to die for your sin. And when he died, he took the peace. He took all that Adam lost and gave it back to us. And before he left, he prayed one good prayer for us. He said, Father, the glory that you gave to me, I've given it back to them. It is my wish now that they be the one just as me and you are one. And he left. The glory the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. So you have peace. Yes. Why we pray for the peace of this city is because there are people that are not born again. And if your peace cannot affect their peace, that means it's a problem. You that have peace, spread it. When Jesus gave that great commission, he said, as you go to preach the word, look for cities and look for people in the city that are worthy. If they accept you, leave your peace there. Somebody, you're not there yet. If you're welcome, leave your peace there because the peace has been given to them. So we pray for the cities. New Testament, you hardly find when they say pray for peace. Because the peace of God, you carry it and I carry it if you're born again. Except you're not born again. And that becomes an error because our bishop has written a book on marriages. It's become an error if the society have to put peace for two families. That's an error. Tell your neighbor it's an error. You're too matured Christians. Where's your peace? The woman bring your peace. The man bring your peace and be one. If you wait for authority to say 50 kilometers, don't come near your wife. I say that is an error and it's a shame. It's an error and it's a shame. That's the way it is. Whether you clap your hands or you don't clap, it's correct. That's the way it is. Your father cannot be the prince of peace and you're looking for peace. It's an error. Mara shows us Isaiah, Isaiah 9 6. I think I'm wrong. Uh, the way I'm rushing it, they think maybe it's my talk. What is he saying? Unto us a child is born, and unto us. A child is given, and his government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called what wonderful counsel, mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Yes. Isaiah spoke it ahead of time before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he came, he gave it to you. For those of you who have been dealing about victory, 
The Gado Teshua. What keeps your victory? What even keeps you before the victory? What keeps you after the victory? You must have the peace of God. Because that's what will keep you. If not, you run before your victory comes. Even after your victory, if you don't have, if you don't have the peace of God, you destroy the victory also. But that shall not be your portion. Yeah. Somebody hear me. That's the way it goes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let scripture help us to interpret itself. Emmanuel help us. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Let's hear the word of God. Philippians 4. Emmanuel, you read for us if you have, if you have it. Philippians, Philippians. yeah, go ahead. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Anxiety causes a man's heart to be worried. Anxiety. Because the things you see will always cause anxiety. But the writer here, Apostle Paul, to be precise, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And when you let your request be made known to God, as soon as you do that, he gives you the peace, the iron. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He says, yes, now, the peace of God, it surpasses every understanding. You are in a marriage, the marriage is not working out here. People can't understand. Why are you still with that man that drinks too much? They can't understand it. You feel me? That's the way it is. You're still there trusting God that God should change this man. That is, it didn't say you should change the man. God should change the habit you don't like. You mothers or you wives, you need to pray for your husbands also. Not for you to run away. He said this surpasses all understanding because it's not something it must be in your heart because always out of the abundance of what you have in your heart the mouth will surely speak and the heart the mind that is where the battlefield is that is where the enemy attacks you can come to church it doesn't make much sense but what makes it at the end of the day you step out the word bears fruit that is the most important thing because the devil will not stop you from coming in. But as this word is going, coming out from the altar of the Lord, it snatches it away. That is the most painful aspect of it. Because he don't want you to hear the word of God. He knows when you hear it and meditate on it day and night, you're able to be successful in your life. So here now, God has also interpreted his word. That there's what they call the peace of God. That brings me on the platform of what I'll be sharing with you today. The peace of God. Tell anybody the peace of God. The peace of God. What is the peace of God? What is the peace of God? The peace of God is a state of rest, quietness, calmness, absence of strife, tranquility. In general, it denotes what we call nothing missing, nothing broken. The peace of God is not only God taking you out of danger, it's the whole package. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That is the peace of God. It helps us in times of strife. It helps us in times of crisis. It helps us in times of turmoil. You are peaceful. People are running. You are not running. You must run with reason. You don't run because people are running. You don't leave because people are leaving. Oh, what is really now? People are leaving. Oh, I have to leave. Is somebody hearing me? You live based on when God says move. You don't move because people are moving. If somebody here, that's what the peace of God is. That's how it works. If you don't have it, you do your own thing. So that's the way it is. That is what the peace of God is. You be in a relationship with God, man with man, and, and nation to nation, and all these are things our Lord Savior was trying to let us know. He made it very clear. When he, he gave this revelation to Apostle John. Let's see John. The book of John 14 verse 27. Are you there? Emmanuel help us. John 14 27. What is he saying? Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your heart not be troubled. Because that is where the thing is. Let your heart not be troubled. Our Lord has given us peace. Not as the word we give to you. But this peace is something divine from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. It's something divine from heaven. John 16 verse 33. These things I have spoken to you. That in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. I have overcome the world. I wish somebody go with a new mind renewed today. Amen. Peace does not mean everything is working perfectly. You need peace in the midst of that trouble. Amen. That's the most important thing. In the midst of that situation you need for you to get your victory, you must be peaceful. Somebody will say, how do I know this? Let's see Ephesians. Ephesians, Ephesians 6. Are you there? Let's start from verse 14. That will help us. It says, stand therefore, having guided your ways with truth, and put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shielded your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, it says, take up the shield of faith, for which you will use to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and what again, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Is somebody hearing me? And then you begin to pray all kinds of prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. May the peace of God be with you and your family. Amen. Because you need it. We need it in this time. There's too many troubles. I don't know about your country, my country, too many troubles. Too many troubles. America, too many troubles. London, they don't even know where they are going. Too many troubles. You see how the whole thing is? There is trouble in the world. The thing here, we born again must understand there is something Jesus told us before he left. And that is what I'm sharing with you. He told us ahead of time, there will be troubles in the world. I have overcome the world and I've given you peace. That peace is tranquility. Somebody say tranquility. Tranquility. You're in the rest. Resting in the Lord. That's the way it is. No matter how the economy goes, David was very right. He said, for I look up to the hills, for there cometh my help. So you understand we have a divine helper that will always help us. He told you ahead of time, I will be with you in times of trouble. And God will never leave you nor forsake you. Why don't you put your hands together unto the Lord? These are promises he's giving me and you. These are things.